Good afternoon and good morning for some people. It's Asser here from Arts Canteen. I'm the managing director of Arts Canteen London. I am very thrilled and delighted this evening to welcome everyone. And uh, this is our second time that we are partnering on this event with the wonderful organization Panipal, headed by our friend Margaret Obank. And it is an absolute pleasure to be uh, part of this initiative this evening. In fact, there is a couple of uh, housekeeping rules that I would like to mention here um, before I hand it to Margaret, our uh, distinguished uh, guest tonight. Um, if you kindly, everyone can mute your mic. And if there is any questions, to be um, forwarded to the panelists, kindly please write it in the chat and we will be able to come to most of the questions um, after the discussion. And now I will hand it to um, the brilliant and the fantastic contributor to, the, um, to this evening, uh, Margaret Obang from Baribal, um, who will be um, making an introduction to each of the participants and say a little bit more about the insights of the prize this evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Asa. Welcome this evening to all our viewers at this celebration of the 2021 Saif Khabash Banipal Prize for Arabic Literary Translation. And a very special welcome to this year's winning translator, Sarah Anani, and Rasha Adli, her author, and to Chair of Judges, Professor Roger Allen, and to Faris Ishaq, who will be enthralling us with a musical interlude on the Ney. In introducing this evening, I will first tell you a little bit about the Banipal Trust and the prize. Banipal Magazine, and here I must tell you as its publisher, it will be reaching the grand old age of 25 years at the end of this year with issue 75. Banipal magazine set up the Banipal Trust for Arab Literature in 2004 to support and raise funding for the magazine, for events with Arab authors, and to raise, um, to bring the literature of today's Arab world to the multicultural readership of English speakers worldwide. But the very next year, we decided to start the Translation Prize. It was the first in the world specifically for published Arabic literary translation into English. It's an annual award, 3,000 pounds goes to the translator or translators of a published translation in English of a full length, imaginative and creative work of literary merit in Arabic. Its aim is to raise the profile of contemporary Arabic literature in general, as well as to honor the important work of individual translators and bring the work of Arab authors to the attention of the wider world. The inaugural prize was awarded on the 9th of October, 2006 to the late and much lamented Humphrey Davis. The 2022 prize is already open for entries with that door closing at the end of next month, 31st. The prize is administered on behalf of the Trust by the Society of Authors, alongside the other UK prizes for literary translation from languages that include Dutch, French, German, Greek, Hebrew, Italian, Spanish, and Swedish. This year's awards were pre pre presented online last Thursday by the Society of Authors eight prizes altogether. The Saif Kobash Banipal Prize has always had four judges each year, two who read both the Arabic and English, and two who only read the English. This year's judges comprised our speaker tonight, 
um, the very well-known Roger Allen, who is Honorary President of the Banipal Trust and Professor Emeritus of Arabic and Comparative Literature at the University of Pennsylvania. Rosemary Hudson, who is a founder publisher of Hope Road Publishing, promoting literary voices from Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean. Ronak Hosni, who is Professor of Arabic and Translation Studies at the American University of Sharjah. And Caroline McCormick, who is founder of the Akatiz Cultural Consultancy and the Akatiz Philanthropy Foundation. The prize is wholly sponsored by Omar Saif Khobash and his family in memory of his father, Saif Khobash, who was passionate about Arabic literature and other literatures of the world. In addition to the prize, from 2016, marking 10 successful years of the prize, the Goldbush family agreed to sponsor an annual lecture in the name of the prize. The lecture is given on any aspect of the subject of Arabic literature and translation. And it's an opportunity to deepen and enrich, enrich dialogue between cultures through the power of translated literature. The lecturers have been well-known writers, academics, translators, and include Anton Shamas, Robert Irwin, Adonis, Hanan Sheikh, Liana Badr, and Jonathan Wright. All of the lectures being hosted by the British Library in London, physically or online. Now a few words about the four other works shortlisted for this year's prize. All of them notable contributions to Arabic literature in high quality translations, as the judges reported. These four works were Voices of the Lost by Lebanese novelist Hoda Barakat, translated by Marilyn Booth, published by One World, A Bed for the King's Daughter by Syrian author Shahla Ujeli, translated by Soad Hussein, published by the Center for Middle East um, Middle Eastern Studies, University of Texas Press. And next Wednesday, this book will be discussed at our monthly Banipal Book Club meeting. Last, last month's book was actually our winner and we had a fantastic discussion at that meeting. The, ne the next uh, shortlisted work is The Frightened Ones by Dima Wanos, also from Syria, translated by Elizabeth Jacquet and published by Harvel Secker. And finally, God 99 by Iraqi author, Hassan Blasim, translated by Jonathan Wright and published by Comma Press. Now let me introduce you to our speakers who are in Cairo and Philadelphia, while Asa and Faris and myself are in London. Our winning translator, Sarah Anani, is an assistant professor in the Department of English Language and Literature at Cairo University. As a literary translator, she's best known until now for her translation of a trilogy of novels by Egyptian writer Kamal Ruehim, the Galal trilogy, comprising Diary of a Jewish Muslim, Days in the Diaspora, and Menorahs and Minarets. She's also translated Victor Hugo's Les Miserables into colloquial Egyptian Arabic. This evening, Sarah will be interpreting for Russia where necessary. Rasha Adli was born in Cairo and is the author of eight novels. She's a researcher and freelance lecturer in the history of art and is Cairo correspondent for the Emirates Culture Magazine. The Arabic original of Girl with Braided Hair, entitled Sharaf, meaning passion, was long listed for the 2018 International Prize for Arabic Fiction. Professor Roger Allen is a Sasha Jane Patterson Harvey Professor Emeritus of Social Thought and Comparative Ethics and Professor Emeritus of Arabic and Comparative Literature, as I said, at the University of Pennsylvania. In 2020, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award for the Sheikh Hamad Award for Translation and International Understanding. He has published numerous studies and books on Arabic literature and has translated works by many modern Arab writers, including Egyptian Nobel laureate, Naguib Mahfouz, also Jabra Ibrahim Jabra, Yusuf Idris, Ahabd Rahman Munif, Meitil Misami, 
Halim Barakat, Ben Salim Himish, Ahmed Tofik, and Hanana Sheikh. Before I hand over to Ro Professor Roger, I would like to introduce Faris Ishaq. He will provide a musical interlude after the readings. Faris is a renowned name master from Palestine, a jazz flautist and composer. He will be playing in a unique instrumental setting that he has developed, whereby he plays the nay flute while accompanying himself simultaneously on leg percussion and frame drum. He has a great website at Faris Ishaq, brackets with a Q, dot com. We are very, very pleased to welcome all of you tonight. Um, and now over to you, Roger. Oh, Roger, so, so. I unmute. Yeah. Am I now unmuted? Okay. You're now unmuted. Good. Thank you very much for that introduction. And uh, before I proceed, I feel that I too want to salute uh, Margaret Maggie Obank as a tremendous pioneer in the forwarding of the translation of modern Arabic literature into English. I am of course acutely aware of what she has achieved and what the atmosphere is in the British Isles by comparison with the situation where I am currently, which is in the United States, where unfortunately the status of Arabic literature is, as it was described by Edward Said uh, a long time ago, when he prepared a list of potential works that might be translated into English. And the New York publisher told him that the problem was that Arabic is a controversial language. However, let's leave that aside and rejoice in the success of Banipal, uh, as Maggie has just mentioned, uh, now reaching a tremendous age, but also playing an enormous role in the forwarding of Arabic literature to the Western world. It's now my great pleasure to turn to our two distinguished colleagues in Cairo and to ask them if they will give us the pleasure of listening to them reading from both the original text, the novel Sharaf by Rasha Adli, and the translation of it, The Girl with Bladed Hair, translated by Sara Ainani. And um, the plan, at least, is that it will be divided into two sections, in one of which the Arabic will be first and the translation second, and thereafter a second phase in which the English will be first and the Arabic will be second. So I now turn to Sarah and Rasha in Cairo, Al-Qahira, where Sarah, al Ustada Tafaddali. أعتقد ان الاستاذه رشا هتبدا بقراءه الجزء العربي تمام وبعدين انا هتبعها بقراءه الجزء الانجليزي عظيم اوكي ام رشا يو ار ميوتد استاذه رشا ان ميوت لما افتحي ميكروفونك ايوه كده اهو ممتاز منذر رجوع زينب إلى البيت في ذلك اليوم بعد موعدها معه الصوت واضح آه في آه صوت مسرسع كده غريب آه زي إيكو جاي من الجهاز بتاع حضرتك لم تغادرها كنت كده كويس والله انا سامعه في حاجه بس هو ده من استاذه رشا يمكن عندك موبايل او جهازين مفتوحين مع بعض يمكن ايه؟ يمكن في... اه هيك كويس الصوت 
الشاي كانت ممتلئة به وتحتشد روحها في وملامحه بعطره وبصوته فهل تراها أحبته مؤكد وماذا غير الحب يجعلها لا تعيش إلا على أمل رؤيتها وماذا غير الحب يشغلها بالتفكير فيه ليلا ونهارا ولكن ما مصير ذلك الحب وهو في نظر الجميع فرنسي جاء مع الحملة لاحتلال بلدها هو واحد من هؤلاء الغزاة فما يطلق عليهم سكان المحروشة حتى إن كان وجوده في البلد للرسم فقط وليس للقتال ولكن من بإمكانه أن يفهم ذلك لم يكن يعنيها ذلك تكفيها الرقصة التي تسرق في أوصالها عندما تقع عيناها عليه هي التي أقترب منها نبيون للحد الذي لم يفصل بينهما سوى عدة أنفاس ولمس خدها وملت شعرها ولم يحرك فيها شيء سوى إحساس بالفزع والزعر أما معه فالأمر مختلف يكفي أن تقع عيناها عليه لترقص فرحا لا قيمة للعالم كله أمام ما تشعر به نحوه ما الذي جنته من هذا العالم هو القسوة واللوم والحسد أم لهم لها هو الصب والكنف والجلي وطاعة عمياء للزوج وأب أناني فأمكنه أن يضحي بأي شيء في سبيل أن يحقق أحلامه وأقرباء لا يتركون بابهم سوى الطلب خدمة أو للثلاث وجيران ينتظرون بفارغ الصبر أن تقع له مصيبة حتى يشمتون فيه ألتون هدية القدر لها جاء ليخلصها من براس هذا الكون وسوف تداوم ينتشلها من هذه الحياة دخلت أمها الغرفة فلم تشعر بها لأنها كانت هائمة في عالم آخر فلكز الزراعها ألم تصيتي من أحلامك بعد ألا يكفيك ما صنعتيه بنا لقد جعلتي سيرتنا على كل الألسان بعينين وساعتين جرأتين فطلعت إليها لا لن أصيف من أحلامي هل بإمكانك أن تحسبينني على أحلامي دعيني أحلم نصيحة عندما تحلمين أحلمي على مقاصد حتى إن, إذا حتى إن أستفقت من حلمك لا تجدي نفسك وقد هبطت من السماء السابعة على جذور رقابتك وليكن تكفيني متعة الحلم هيا أن هذه ساعديني في تنظيف المنزل وأعداد الطعام أمي لن أنظف منزلا ولن أطه طعاما يوجد كثير من القدم الجواري يمكنهم مساعدتك هذا آخر ما جنيناه من دلال أبيك لك خرجت أمها من الغرفة وهي خاضبة وترطن بالسباب تعلم جيدا إلى ماذا يرمي كلام أمها فهي تعتقد أنها متيمة بنابليون ولها كل الحق أن يملأها الخوف والقلق فما مجرد ذكر اسمه ترتجف الأجزاء لا يوجد أحد يعرف ما الذي يضمره هذا الرجل تمنت لو أنها تستطيع أخبار أمها أن الأمر لا علاقة له ببونابار تمنت لو بأستطاعت أن تحكي لها عن ألتون وعن مشاعرها تجاهه ولكن هل بإمكان أمها أن تفهم ماذا يعني الحب طوال اليوم لم يجول بل فاطمة إلا حال أبنتها وما زاد من قلقها أنها لم تستطع معرفة ما يجوز رأس زوجها وأبنتها وبنى بارد من خلف المشربية كانت تراقب غيوما تسبح في السماء وتركض باتجاه مصيرها غيوبا ثقيلة وقاتمة كان جدتها النوم بسبب التفكير وحيرة البال فتقلب زاد اليمين وزاد الشمال تنظر إلى زوجها فتراه مضعق على ظهره يهدس بكشور سمين على وقع شخيره العالي فتملأ الرغبة بأن تنهاره وتوخذه وتصيح فيه 
ما الذي حدث لك على هذه الدرجة أنت عبد للمكينة والمنصب ولا أجلهما يمكنك التطحير أهل بيتك وبدينك وكل شيء وأي شيء وإذا به فجأة فإنه سمع صياحها التي تكتمه في نفسها ففتح عينا واحدة ونظر عليها وقال بصوت يملأه النعاس ناني يا أمرأة في وقت سابق كانت ستنام شاءت أم أبا سلام أمرها بالنوم ولكن أنا الأوان لأن ترفض أوامره بعدما أصبحت لا أهمية لها لقد سقطت مرتبته ومتانته في نظرها من زوافق أن يقدم ابنته هدية النبيون في سبيل أن يعطف عليه بمنصب أو جاه كيف أستطاع أن يفعل ذلك؟ وكيف يستطيع أن ينظر في وجوه الناس وهو الشيخ الأزهري في المكانة الكبيرة؟ هي نفسها لم يعد في استطاعتها أن ترفع نظرها في وجه أحد تسيرة الشوارع والطرقات منقطع رأسها وكأنها تبحث عن شيء سقط منها وألسنة النسوة خلفها تصيات تلفع زهرة انتظرت حتى تشرق الشمس فترسل خيوطها الحرارية الناعمة لتنشر الضوء والدفء ارتدت حبرتها مسرعة وخرجت دون أن يشعر بها أحد صارت في التاريخ متقطع رأسها تسلك طرق مختلفة ستبعدها عن طريقها ولكنها مجبرة على سلوكها حتى تتفادى لقاء النسوة اللواتي سيمصرناها بوابل من الألفاظ البذيئة ومن حارة إلى حارة وصلت إلى سوق الجغال ومن هناك أكثرت ومن هناك مكريا وطلبت منه أن يذهب بها إلى حارة اليهود بالمسلم توقف بها المكاري عند بوابة الحي وأخبرها بأنه لن يستطيع الدخول فالجمال تقوم بحمل جهاز عروس ومن الصعب المرور في تلك الحارة الضيقة ألقت له بربع بارة وصارت في تاريخها بخطوات مرتبطة تقدم قدما وتأخر أخرى لمح السيدة تكلي كارات من عجين الزلابية وتضحى في طراطيس لبيعها بعد أن ترشها بالسكر فأشترت منها فرصاصا وصارت حتى آخر الحارة وتركت بمتركة نحسية كساها الصدق بابا خشبيا قديما متشققا وعندما لم يجب أحد قررت اللجوء من خلف أتعب حيث سمع صوتا محشربا أتيل من خلف البيت الصبر الصبر فالصبر جميل حدثت نفسها هناك صبر أكثر من ذلك حتى أن الزلابية أصبحت باردة أصدر فتح البيت سريرا ودعتها العجوز من خلفه للدخول وتقدمتها إلى طاولة في فتحة الدار كانت تتأك على عقزها الخشبي وترتدي جلبابا أسودا أكل الظهر عليه وشرب ممتلئا بالصفوف والرفعة أما شعرها المنفوش من كل الجهات فكان بلون الصلب تذكرت أنها لا تزال كما شهدتها آخر مرة لم تتبدل ولم يتغير شيء فيها حتى الدار هي, هي ذاتها عفنت الرائحة وتتوسط فتحتها تلك الطاولة التي جلست إليها وأمها منذ سنوات طوال أنشغلت السيدة في أعداد القهوة بتحميص البن في محمصة صغيرة ثم قامت بطحنه بعدما أصاصت إليه الهال والمسكة ففاحت رائحة البن في إنحاء المكان قدمت لها صدمة قرصات الزلابية حسنا لتعيها ولنأكلها مع القهوة كيف هي قهوتك؟ في زمن سابق كانت ستركض شرب القهوة فهي حرام كما يقولون ولكن الآن لا بأس بفنجان من القهوة مضبوطة صبت لهما القهوة في قوبين من الألمونيوم وسألتها كيف حالك يا فاطمة؟ أندهشت يعقل أنها لا تزال تتذكرها أما زلت تتذكرينني وقد مر ما مر من الزمن نعم عرفت من رائحته رائحتي كل من خط عددة هذه الدار أعرفه من رائحته لم أذكر أنني تعثرت اليوم ضحكت المرأة بصوت عال فبدأ ذمها الأمرض إلا من ناب واحد فقبر مظلم 
نسجي بحاجة إلى التعثر إلى أعراف الصوت أعرافك من رائحة جلستي فلكل جلسة عطري خاص الذي يفوح منه ويشبهه وأتذكر جيدا رائحتك لأنها من الروائح القليلة التي صدفتني في حياتي هي رائحة طيبة فأرض بك صحيح هذه المرة أمتزكت برائحة أخرى لكن رائحة التربة البيت ما زالت صغية عليها انتظري أخذت تتشمم الهواء بأنفها وأنها كأنها كلب يتتبع أثر لص إنها رائحة الخوف لا ليست رائحة خوف فقط إنها مزيج من خوف وهلع وهوب وحزن ما بك يا إمرأة كان هذا الصدمة بحسرة النوم الفرنسا لقد انقلبت حياتي رأسا على عقد ما أن أتم وكأن النوم لم يأتوا لشيء إلى الاحتلال بيتي مؤكد هذا البنابرتا سحر زوجي وأبنتي لقد تغيرا ولم يعودوا كما كان رشفت من كوب القهوة وأكملت لقد ثبت حال زوجي رجل الدين الورع وكأنه لم يعرف الله ورسوله يوما وأمناتي الطاهرة البريئة أصبح سلوكها يشبه سلوك الغوازي والغنيات كيف يحدث ذلك من ليلة وضحاها إلا إذا كان قد صحر لهما شرور النفس أسوأ من السحر وزوجك وأمناتك نفسهم شريرتين ولكن كيف هو زوجي الذي عصرت طيلة عمري وهي أمناتي تربية يدي وأعرفها أكثر من نفسي شرور النفس أقوى من كل شيء وأسرع من أي من أي سحر السحر بإمكاننا إخراجه والقضاء عليه ولكن شرور النفس متأصلة فيها ولا تخرج إلا بخروج الروح هذا السيدة بأسها بشدة وهي تنفي ذلك قائلة لا 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 أظن ذلك فالنفس لا تتبدل بين ليلة وضحاها من حال إلى حال إنما يحدث معهم سحر مؤكد كان هناك طاقة فضية قديمة فيها ماء أمام العجوز العراقة والعجيب أن هذا الماء تصدر عنه تموجات كتلك التي تظهر عن رمي حجر في مياه بخيرة راقدة فما تجاب هذه التموجات أن تذهب حتى تعود مرة أخرى دعينا نرى هل أحضرت أثر لهما قبل ما جاءها إليها تذكرت أن العرافة طلبت من أمها عندما زارتها من فترة طويلة أن تجلب معها أثرا للكشف لذلك أحضرته معها صحبت من داخل عبقتها كيفا من الخيش مدككا بحبل طويل أخرجت منه منزلين أخذهما حريري لزينة والآخر من البكة البيضاء لزوجها أخذت السيدة المنزلين وبدأت في تمتمة التعويز بلغة غريبة وأخشن صوتها وتبدلت ملامحها وكلما أندمجت, أندمجت في تعويزها أكثر أخذت المياه في الطاسة تفور أكثر وأكثر وكأنها تغلي فوق النار ثم همدت وتركت المنزلين جانبا وتوقفت المياه من فوران قال تمنيني ما الذي حدث إنه ليس سحر كما قلت لك إنه شرور النفس ثم سمتت مرة أخرى وقالت بصوت أقل نحدة من المعتاب نتبدلت ملامحها لتصبح أكثر لينا كان الله في عونك كان الله في عونك ارتجبت فاطمة رعبا فما الذي تنبأت به والذي بدلها من حال إلى آخر وجعلها تحزن لأجلها وهي المعروف عنها قصة القلب وصوت أقرب منه للتوسل طمنيني ليس ممجدور إكفال شيء اذهبي إلى معمد موسى ابن ميمون في نهاية الزقاق وأطلبي رحمة الرب وتبركي من مياه البئر الطاهرة وأحملي منها وحممي أبنتك وزوجك بها ومدون صابت أنظار سرقتها وقامت تتأك على عقازها أغلقي الباب خلفك خالة خالة أرجوك انتظري ألا يمكنك القيامة بشيء من أجلنا أكتفت بهز رأسها بقوة وأولتها زهرها وذهبت خرجت فاطمة مهمومة ساعة 
تسحب قدميها بصعوبة وتتساءل عن القدر الذي رأته العرافة ولم ترد أن تخبرها لي في الخارج كانت هناك مجموعة من الأطفال يرسمون بالتبشور مربعات على الأرض ويحبلون فيها اقتربت منهم وسألتهم أين معمد موسى ابن ميدون؟ أشار صبي إلى مبنى في آخر الحارة وبالرغم من أنها لم تعرف من هو, من هو هذا الميمون الذي طلبت منها العرافة الذهاب إليه والتبرك به إلى أنها فعلت ما طلبته منها فهي كالغريق الذي يتعلق بالقشة فخطوات مترددة دخلت المعبد الفسيح كان أمامها ثلاثة مباني منفصلة مبنى الإقامة شعائر الصلاة اليهودية ومبنى مبنى الإقامة شعائر الصلاة اليهودية ومبنى خاص للرجال ومبنى خاص بالنساء وحجرة للتبرك والشفاء رياح باردة لم تعرف من أين هبت كادت أن تعصف بها وقفت مترددة خائفة لا تعرف أين تذهب لاحظها الحبر وأقترب منها يسألها ماذا تريدين؟ أريد أن أتبرك وأحمل معي ماء معي منه أحمم زوجي المريض أشار إلى بئر في آخر الحوش من هذه البئر يمكنك أن تحملي الماء وأذهبي إلى غرفة الشفاء هناك وأستبي على نفسك نقاطا من الزيت فبركي بها شكرته ومضى بالفعل ذهبت إلى غرفة الشفاء وطلبت من الرجل مهمته مساعدة المرضى الذين جاءوا من مختلف المدن والمحافظات القريبة والبعيدة بعضا من الزي أخبرها الرجل أن بإمكانها أن تبيت ليلتها بالغرفة حتى يتسنى الموسى بن ميمون أن يزورها ليلا ويساعدها على الشفاء فتحججت بأنها تركت رجيعا وراءها فألها عن موضع ألامها ليسكب فوقه الزي فأشارت إلى قلبها وهو تحديدا كان هو مصدر ألمها على مائدة الغداء رصة الجاري الأطباق تنجر بالخضروات باللحم والأرز وصحن ممتلئ بأعواد خضراء من جرجير والفجر أمددت الأيدي تأكل بشهية عداها كانت شاردة في المدى البعيد لاحظ زوجها وسألها ما الذي حدث يا أمرأة؟ هل مات أحد؟ لماذا أنت مهمومة هكذا؟ ثم ضحك بسخرية فبدلته زينة مدح هكذا أصبحت أمة ضيقة الخلق دائما بتيقلي أعتقد العشر دقائق خلصوا فنكتفي بهذا القدر ولا إيه رأيكم؟ أوكي يس سو سارة إف يو إف يو ويل ريد بليز بارت أوف ذات أي دونت ثينك وي كان دو أول أوف إت بس أم وندرين إف إف أي كود بوسبون إت أنتيل ذا نيكست ريدينج أت ويتش بوينت أي كان دو أ ليتل بيت مور أوف ذيس إن إنجلش أو ويتش أوف يو بريفير أوكي um, well, you know, we, we've gone a bit over here, so... Um, yeah, so let's keep going for now, and, and I'll um, cut it down for the next part. Okay. Um, but the next part would begin with you doing English and then Arabic afterwards, but... Oh, no, I don't think... Um, uh, let me ask Rasha if... Ustazah Rasha, we can stop with the part of the Arabic and the next time I'm going to read English, but we've been here for about half an hour. Okay, and the most delicious talk. I think I can just do English next time. So I think basically you've got about five five minutes or five or ten minutes to do whatever you want in English now. I think that's what we'll have to do. Okay, I'll do I'll do some English now. Okay. Okay, I'll just I'll just start from where from where um Russia started. Yes. Um, since Zainab returned home after meeting him in the park, his face had not left her. She was filled with him, her soul clinging to him, his face, his scent, his voice. Was she in love with him? She must be, for what else could but love could be making her live only for the hope of seeing him? What else but love could be making her think of him and only him day and night? But what could come of this love? In the eyes of all, he was a Frenchman, here with the campaign to invade her country. He was one of the infidel invaders, as the Egyptians called him. Even though he was only in the country to paint and not to fight, who would understand that? But what did she care? The tremor that took her when, her, when she laid eyes on him was enough. She had been so close to Napoleon that there had been only a few breaths between him and her. He had touched her cheek and stroked her hair, yet he had stirred nothing within her but a feeling of panic and unease. 
With Alton, everything was different. She had but to lay eyes on him to dance inside with joy. The whole world meant nothing compared to what she felt for him. What had the world given her but cruelty, rebukes, and envy? A mother who cared for nothing but cooking, sweeping, and polishing, and blind obedience to her husband. A selfish father who could give anything away to make his own dreams come true. Friends who were only jealous of her. Family and relations who only came to visit when they needed something or to borrow money. Neighbors who could hardly wait to see some disaster befall them so as to gloat their fill. Alton was the gift that fate had given her. He had come to free her from the clutches of the world she lived in, and she would let him come to her rescue and sweep her away from this life she lived. Her mother came into the room. She didn't even notice, lost as she was in another world. Hey, her mother prodded her in the arm. Aren't you done dreaming yet? Wake up, she put her hands on her hips. Isn't it enough what you've done to us? You've made us the butt of everyone's gossip. With wide, bold eyes, Zainab looked up at her mother. No, I won't wake up, she said firmly. Will you not even let me dream? A word of advice, her mother said. When you dream, dream a dream your own size. That way you won't break your neck when you wake up from your dream in seventh heaven. Let it happen, Zainab snapped back. It's enough to have dreamed. I think that's all right for me. Okay, now I'm unmuted. And what I'd like to do now, please, is to request from Faris Ishaq that he treats us to some of his wonderful music. Is he there? Faris. There he is, but he's sideways. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, Telephone Maug. Okay, Lassa. <laughs> okay, so hello, everyone, and. Uh, Thank you, uh, Asir, and everybody uh, for inviting me to be a uh, guest during this event. Um, and congratulations to the winners. Uh, it was great and inspiring to hear you also. Um, so what I'm going to play really quick, um, it's uh, a composition inspired by uh, Mahmoud's uh, Darwish unique uh, flow of writing, especially the poem uh, End of the Night, Akhir al -Layl. Um And it is an exploration of uh, his unique flow of writing. So it's a dedication to Mahmoud Darwish. <laughs> Yes. 
لكنني أنهض من قاع الأصابير سطوح النادي خطوات الاهل والاحبار اصطاد النجوم القادمه انني امشي على مهلي وقلبي مثل نصف البرتقاله وأنا أعجب للقلب الذي يحمل حارة وجبالا كيف لا يسأم حالا حارة وجبالا كيف لا يسأم حالا حارة أعجب القلب الذي يحمل حارة وجبالا كيف لا يسأم حالا وأنا أمشي على مهلي وعيني تقرأ الأسماء والغيم على كل الحجارة وعلى يدك يا ذات العيون السود يا سيفي المذهب ها أنا أنهض من قاع الأساطير وألعب مثل دوري على الأرض وأشرب من سحاب عالق في ذيل زيتون ونخلي ها أنا أشتم أحبابي وأهلي فيك يا ذات العيون السود
هذا العيون السود فيك هذا العيون السود ها أنا أشتم أحبابي وأهلي فيك هذا العيون السود يا ثوبي المقصب لم تزل كفاك تلين من الخضرة والقمح المذهب وعلى عينيك ما زال بساط الصحو بالوشم الحريري مكوكب That was wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Faris, for this uh, beautiful journey you took us on today. Thank you Thank so you much. So and now, uh, and now uh, I'll hand it back to Professor Roger Allen. Thank you. Thank you. And it's my great pleasure now to have a conversation with both the author of the novel and its translator. Um, in fact, I'll reveal a little secret here, and that is that I sent uh, Sarah a, a, a list of possible questions. I think maybe because of time, we may not uh, pose them all to Russia, but I do have also some questions for Sarah as translator. Um, but the first, um, I guess probably the most obvious question is, uh, what inspired uh, Russia to write Sharaf and uh, how lengthy a project was it? هو السؤال الأول طبعا استلهامك لكتابة التأليف الرواية والمشروع استغرق وقت قد إيه؟ استلهمت بس تأليف الرواية أو لو تقدري تعلي صوتك شوية حضرتك عشان بس مش سامعة أوي فكرة الرواية جاتلي من قصة زينب معنا باليوم 
رواية أنا كتبتها في سنة طبعا بحث وأبحث مني أبحاث كتير قوي كتابة والمراجعة وتقريبا سنة سنة وشهرين في الحدود دي يعني Okay, what inspired me was the story of Zainab and Napoleon. The novel took about a year to write. There was a lot of research and uh, writing, rewriting, editing, and so forth. So I would say about a year plus two months. Mm -hmm. And to what extent is uh, Russia's specialization and interest in art history a contributor to her decision to take on this subject? فإلى مد... إلى أي مدى آه يعني خلفيتك في تاريخ الفن آه خلتك آه يعني أو أو تدخلت في تناولك للموضوع؟ آه في الواقع دراسة تاريخ الفن هي تتداخل في جميع أعمالي مش العمل ده بس بس العمل ده كان يعني تدخلت فيه بشكل كبير على أساس إن الرسام التونسي المستشرق اللي جه مع الحملة آه المستشرق الفرنسي اللي جه مع الحمله لان انا مهتمه بتاريخ الفن ومهتمه كمان اكتر بفن الاستشراق لذلك كانت الروايه دي خدت جانب كبير من من دراستي الاكاديميه. It's well my my actually my background in art history informs all of my work not just this novel. Um, it informed this novel especially because it overlaps with another of my interests, which is Orientalism and Orientalist art. I was uh, fascinated by the concept of there being an Orientalist artist who came. And um, that was what um, really set the novel apart and um, um, motivated it. Yes, that's, uh, in fact, answering very nicely a que another question I had. But um, this is a novel which is very, very aware of the history of the Napoleonic invasion of Egypt. And I'm wondering if she had particular recourse or if she has had particular recourse to some of the sources on that particular period. And I, I mentioned, of course, specifically Al Jabarti. Yes, هو بيقول ان ده هو كويس ان اجابتك اجابت اجابت على السؤال تاني كان في باله لكن هو عموما الروايه دي يعني فيها فيها تخصص شديد وواضح ان فيها تبحر. في فترة الحملة الفرنسية فهو كان بيتساءل لو تتذكري في الأسئلة عن المراجع اللي حضرتك رجعت لها على الأخص يمكن الجبارتي أو غيره من المراجع أنا في الرواية دي عملت سيرش كبير قوي واسع قوي طبعا الجبارتي كان أساسي عندي يعني الجبارتي كان هو المؤرخ تقريبا المصري الوحيد اللي ذكر قصة زينة مع نابليون uh, it, I did a very wide range of research, and especially Gabarti, because it was the only source that actually mentioned the relationship of Zainab with Napoleon. Right. Right. <laughs> يعني في المراجع اللي قريتها الفرنسية كانت زينة البكري وتلقب بالمصرية عشيقة نابليون. Okay, uh, I also had access to a number of French references uh, in which they were uh, more specific. Well, the thing is that the nature of Zainab's relationship with Napoleon is a little bit ambiguous. The French always called her Napoleon's mistress or Napoleon's lover. And uh, this was something that they kept repeating, Napoleon's lover or Napoleon's mistress. Uh, whereas El Gabarti doesn't really uh, go deeply into the nature of the relationship between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm interested. This is a, a novel which uses history. You might call it a historical novel. I wonder if what Russia thinks the role of the historical novel is in modern Arabic literature. Or am I the one who's broken up? I'm sorry. Um, I'm. I think I. I think I broke up for a minute because I didn't hear your question. Oh, I, I, would, I was saying that, that this is probably. It's certainly a novel that uses history very much, as as uh, Russia mm. has just described. I'm. I'm wondering what Russia thinks the role of, of the historical novel is in modern Arabic literature, because there are many examples of it now. 
اه هو بما ان الروايه دي بتستلهم التاريخ بشكل كبير جدا دكتور راجر بيسال حضرتك ايه رايك في دور او ايه رؤيتك لدور الروايه التاريخيه في المشهد الروائي في العالم العربي النهارده او ايه دور الروايه التاريخيه عند لدى الروايات العربيه هنقول ان الروايات التاريخيه كتابه فيها توسعت قوي في الفتره الاخيره ولكن مش كل الروايات التاريخيه ممكن ان هي ت... ممكن ان هي تكون جيده او مناسبه لان في روايات تاريخيه الكتابه فيها بتبقى عباره عن اعاده تصدير للتاريخ بشكل مختلف يعني هو هو الوقائع هي هي الاحداث ما فيش اي جديد فاعتقد ان ده مش بيضيف مش بيضيف حاجه لل... للتاريخ او او للقارئ فانا لما بكتب روايه تاريخيه لازم اقدم للقارئ حاجه جديده معرفه جديده معلومه جديده مش بس ان انا اعيد عليه نفس المعلومات اللي هو اكيد عارفها there's been a resurgence of interest in historical novels uh, these days and um, the historical novels have become popular but the thing is that not every historical novel necessarily have, has something to add because there's a large percentage of historical novels which i find tend to just rehash or regurgitate Uh, the same events that people are already quite familiar with, and they just um, seem to be narrating the, the events. So um, unless there is some sort of new viewpoint, new angle, or new perspective uh, for people to engage with, um, otherwise it becomes a matter of uh, just a flat retelling. Mm -hmm. That leads really, because she, uh, she just talked about readers, Right. Um, that uh, one of my questions is, uh, what does she hope the Egyptian, Arab, and Western reader get out of a reading of this text? And attached to that, does she think it, it has any particular relevance or a particular message to convey to the world today? آه هو بما ان حضرتك ذكرتي القراء فده بيؤدي بيا لسؤال ثاني كنت عايزه اساله آه يعني ايه اللي ممكن يستخلصه القارئ سواء المصري او العربي او الاجنبي من الروايه دي ويمكن كمان سؤال اوسع مدى انه آه ايه الرساله اللي ممكن الروايه دي توصلها للعالم النهارده اذا حبيتي تتكلمي في ده يعني. أنا في الرواية دي كنت يعني كنت عايزة ألقي الضوء على دور المستشرقين لأن ألتون جيرمان بيعتبر مستشرق كنت عايزة ألقي الضوء على أن المستشرقين قد إيه دورهم كان قوي وكان فعال وكان مهم جدا لأن هم تركوا لينا تركوا لينا تراث كبير جدا إحنا بنرجع له في بعض الأحيان يعني في أحيانا لما بنبقى عايزين نتعرف أكتر على تاريخ معين على حقبه زمنيه معينه ما بيبقاش في قدامنا لان وقتها ما كانش في طباعه ما كانش في صحافه ما كانش في تلفزيون ما كانش في كاميرات ما كانش في غير ريشه الفنان فانا في الروايه دي كنت عايزه كنت عايزه اوضح دور المستشرقين كنت عايزه اوضح دور الحمله الفرنسيه على مصر ان هي بالرغم ان فيها نواحي قوي سيئه الحملة الفرنسية بتاعت نابليون على بار بونابرت على مصر فيها جانب سلبي فيها ايضا جانب ايجابي وكنت عايزه الاهم بقى من كل ده كنت عايزه الظلم اللي وقع على زينب البتري الفتاه الصغيره اللي تعتبر طفله اللي القوا بيها الى التهلكه باباها فكنت عايزه ان انا ارفع الظلم عليها في هذا العمل يعني Okay, um, well, the, the thing is, uh, I think the role of Orientalists is very important, and I did want to throw some light on that, because, in fact, um, they have preserved a great part of our heritage. When we are looking for historical material to cover a certain um, era, when we're looking for the record of a certain period, often, frequently, we only have Uh, the materials of Orientalists to to go back to, and we do need to remember that you know those eras. There was no, there were no cameras, there was no television, um, there was uh, you know printing presses were, were brought in. So um, we really uh, don't have much record except for uh, the brush strokes of an artist. Um, only painters could uh, make a visual record of of what was 
going on or offer us a visual record of that time. Uh, so, so that's one thing. And, and that's sort of what I'm thinking about the French campaign, that it had um, a great deal of uh, negative things about it, but it also did have its positive aspects, mm. namely uh, mm. recording and documenting uh, a lot of things. Um, th and the other thing is that I really wanted to um, clear Zainab's name because she was actually a child. I mean, age-wise, she was a child whose father presented her uh, to Napoleon uh, in his quest for glory. And um, she was unjustly accused of all sorts of things when she was just a child. And um, I really did uh, want to, to clear her name, historically speaking. That's, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because uh, that was something which I did. <laughs> I the, the, the role of the, the female in society very much so. Um, let me transfer now to the trans the translation process and obviously Sarah this will involve you quite a lot but the, the, my first question was and is uh, how did you choose this novel and were you two acquainted with each other uh, before you started this project um هو بيسالني انت ازاي اخترتي الروايه دي وكان ليكوا اي معرفه ببعضيكوا قبل ما تبداوا قبل ما تبداوا الروايه uh no actually um my relationship with russia has um uh, only been since i started working on the novel we didn't have any prior knowledge of each other and and it's it's really nice to to actually meet someone through their work because um then you sort of form a, a picture of them which is completely different from if you if you personally knew them which is which is rather good. Um, in fact, the American University in Cairo, which is Hoopo Press, uh, Hoopo Press were the ones who uh, chose the book on the basis of it having been long listed for the Booker Prize. Yes. yes. And uh, because uh, they, they do select award-winning novels. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, while I had heard of the novel, I hadn't read it and I was uh, pleasantly surprised and very interested to, um, uh, to to make to make the acquaintance of the novel and of the characters through through those pages. It, I mean, you, you are a very experienced translator, and I, I I'm wondering, um, as you read through the novel, did you feel that there would be any aspects of it which would be difficult to uh, render into English? There's always uh, whenever you get colloquialisms, one wonders whether to go British or American. That's always one of those things. Yes. And um, another thing is uh, Alton's diary was really rather interesting to me. Uh, Alton is the painter in the yes. novel who, uh, for, for the benefit of the audience, the, the Orientalist painter who writes yes. a diary of his experiences in Egypt. And this is written in the um, you know, late um, 18th uh, century. And it's um, naturally, it's novel, its language would not be the language of today. So uh, I, um, sort of little things like um, take the air instead of go for a walk, um, just turns of phrase that are slightly archaic, slightly outdated mm -hmm. to, to make it uh, at contrast with the rest of the novel and specifically the contemporary parts. And um, I mean, this is obviously a, a continuing question. Um, who chose the English title and why? That's that's the publisher. That's the publisher. I, I, and I suspect if that we might be the recall, case. yes, yes, if we recall, E. M. Forster uh, wanted to call his novel "Where Angels Fear to Tread" Monteriano, yes. but the publisher objected strenuously on the grounds, and Forster says that in his letters, that yes. it would just have too drastic an impact on sales. Mm -hmm. So that is often the case. And, and I, I don't really disapprove of it. I think the practice of, of giving, you know, different titles, uh, absolutely, why not? If, if it's going to resonate or strike a chord with readers, um, absolutely, yes. why not? Yes. I, I, I must say, I've encountered exactly the same issue with multiple publishers, on about multiple multiple works. So uh, I am entirely in sympathy with what you're saying here. Um, yes. Did you at any time contact uh, Dr. Rasha about your translation or show her your translation? 
Oh, I, I actually didn't. This was one of those exemplary things where, you know, the death of the author and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I pretty much interacted. I think I might have um, asked her once if there was a specific English spelling for Alton because he was the only completely fictional character in the, in the uh -huh. novel. Uh -huh. But I think other than that, um, I, I don't think there was any direct contact. Mm -hmm. Right, well, thank you very much for that. And now what I think I'll do is open the chat box and uh, see uh, what questions we have. Yes, I've received a question via chat and I wasn't sure whether to type the answer or say it out loud. Uh, um, I think it might be easier if we are, um, with your permission, maybe yes. go live with, with answers and questions. So people can type in the question and then you can <clears throat> answer publicly, if, if that is okay. Well, there's one question at the bottom, which I see, what is the Arabic title? And I think we've just answered that. It, it, oh, Sharaf. the Arabic title is Sharaf, yes. Sharaf, meaning passion, really, Yes, I, I guess. Yes. Um, and there was one similar from uh, also, uh, I mean, it was probably very close to, to your question earlier from uh, Samira Kawar about um, why did she choose uh, to translate this novel in particular. So I think there was a, a, a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, equal question earlier from Roger. In oh. that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And unless, uh, Samira, you wanted to add on, please feel free to, to do so. Thanks. Okay, I'm looking through the questions here. Okay, I think we've answered the question of the translator's challenge, which was there. Uh, here's one. Historian and artist Neil Irvin Painter has written and created collages on the theme of Orientalist art and the image of women. Perhaps a, um, a fruitful connection for Russia Adli. I, in fact, actually attended a, an exhibition on Orientalist art um, in Narbonne in France, but it, it turned out, I, I looked at it the other day, uh, a whole series of Orientalist paintings, um, but they were all based on the, the French territories. I mentioned Delacroix, if you remember, of course, the famous Les Femmes d'Arger, which I, I think is a wonderful illustration that Delacroix is sent to paint some, quote, Arab women, unquote. He goes to Algiers and contacts the local authorities and said, I need to paint some Arab women. Well, of course, the, the idea of a French painter being able simply to find some Arab women to paint. So, of course, they, the, the official who he contacts actually allows him to paint his wives and, and his harem, which is what Les Femmes oh. d'Algiers actually is. Anyway. Um, I wonder if uh, Russia is at all interested specifically in the tradition of the odalisk as a as a theme of Orientalist painting. Uh, هو كان الدكتور راجا بيقول لحضرتك هل أنت مهتمة بتراث الأودالسك أو اللي هي الجميلات ال العربيات في تاريخ الفن المستش الاستشراقي بالذات يعني بالضبط وانا عندي كتاب عن الاستشراق اسمه القاهره المدينه الذكريات الكتاب ده بيعني القاهره يعني القاهره المدينه الذكريات هو كتاب آه. عن تاريخ فن الاستشراق في مصر والقاهره يعني وبيحتوي على لوحات كتير قوي للمستشرقين رسموهم للنساء المصريات uh, mm -hmm. I have actually a book, uh, one, of, one of the books I have is called Cairo, the Art, the Memories, and it has a great many um, odalisks and uh, paintings of uh, Oriental women in general, um, drawn by or painted by Orientalist um, artists, and there's, there's, it, it, is, it comprises a very diverse collection of those. Mm -hmm. Let me see. 
uh, I see this now, Samira Kawar. Dur Sufiya Firriwaya. Wahiya. Ah, okay. Fi Dur, Fi Suel El Staza Rasha. You will Anna El Staza Samira Kawar. But you will Anna Batasa Al and Dur Sufiya Firriwaya. Rahm Hiya El Hol El Sufiya El Ansur El Assassi. اللي بتساعد شريف على ان هو يغير مسار حياته ولكن بعد كده الصوفيه بتختفي او تطوري اكتر من في الروايه الروايه ما كانتش ما كانتش صوفيه كان فيها دور كبير بس هي كانت مرآه خلفيه بالنسبه لي كنت حاطه الصوفيه وال يعني شريف انتهك الصوفية علشان يخرج من حالة معينة فأنا الصوفية ما كانتش دور ليها دور أساسي في الرواية أو هي القائمة عليها الرواية لا هي كانت مرآة خلفية بشكل مش أساسي يعني في العمل دكتورة <تصفيق> She seems to be locked there. Uh, what happened to her? Probably it's a, it's a connection or disconnected or or maybe uh, the electricity. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, we, we'll wait a few minutes for her to come back. Uh, there she is. She's back. She's back. She's muted. Sorry, Sorry I, I was knocked offline. الانترنت بتاعي وقع. اوه. طب حضرتك سمعت الإجابة ولا أعيدها تاني؟ لا أنا للأسف ما سمعتش الإجابة معلش كنت أوف لاين أنا آسفة. أنا بقول إن الصوفية في العمل هي كانت مرآة خلفية، يعني ما كانتش أساس، ما كانتش حاجة يعني أنا يعني القائمة على الصوفية، إنما كانت هي فيها جزء من الصوفية. بس عشان كده يعني. Oh, uh, well, uh, Sufism in the novel was in the nature of a rearview mirror, we could say. Um, it, it isn't a novel about Sufism, and for that reason, I uh, couldn't really hijack the focus of the novel and, and push it in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, looking at chat again. It looks to me as though we may have come to the end of the questions. Unless, uh, I don't see any more that we haven't answered. The, Sarah, there are a lot of questions asking you about why you chose the novel. I think we've, we've dealt with that. Yes, again, the, the novel was long listed for the Booker Prize and Hoopo Fiction with which I work uh, yeah. always does seem to seek out novels that have been either long-listed or short-listed for literary prizes, especially in the original Arabic. Oh, here's another uh, one. Okay, that's interesting. Alton? <laughs> That wasn't my that wasn't my intention. It it wasn't what I intended. No. Uh huh. Well, let's have a, a final look at the chat. Uh, if that is the end, then um, I'll move on to closure of this event. Um, okay. بما ان ما فيش تعليقات تاني في اختتم اختتم الجلسه دي بروفيسور رجر وي انيشالي يو نو هاف اورجنايزد اور سيلف فور 1 اور اند ا هاف يس هاور اف اف اودينس اند بارتيسيبانتس وود يو لايك وود لايك تو ميبي بيرهابس جاست ا ريمايندر ذات اتس ان اوبن سبيس اند floor is open for more question one or more two if you would like 
Okay, well, we can certainly do that, yes. Yeah, please. أسئلة تانية أو يتوسع أكثر تفضلوا يعني لسه قدامنا مساحة تسمح يعني مساحة تسمح. Absolutely. Thank you. هو أنا ما عنديش أسئلة أنا بس عايزة أشكرك جدا على على اهتمامك بالعمل وتفاهميكي فيه وعايزة أبارك لا أنا آسفة ما فيش أسئلة بس إيه تاني؟ بس أنا عايزة أشكرك على تفاهميكي وجهدك في ترجمة العمل اوه وعايزة ابارك لك <تصفيق> ده انا لازم ده انا لازم ابارك لك آه... 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 وفي سؤال في سؤال تاني انا عفوا انا ما اعرفش سميره دكتوره ولا استاذه فانا بعتذر اذا كنت اخطئ في في العمل فيرست اوف اول جست راشا واز واز ثانكينج مي فور ماي ترانسليشن اوف ذا ورك ويتش از فيري سويت اوف هير اند اي ثينك يو نو وي شود ثانك يو فور رايتنج ات بس في سؤال هنا لا باس به الاستاذه uh, سميره بتقول في سؤال اخير هل انتم شايفين ان الروايه الجايزه بوكر العربي بتعمل عمل الفلتر او بتغربل الادب العربي الذي يترجم uh, it depends on the publisher it, it really um, if i don't know who this was a question for but um you know assuming that i'm i'm just jumping into answer it here uh i think that uh the large publishing houses uh such as uh hupo who really invest and who have done and and um who are an offshoot of auc press who have done nagib mahfouz before um i think it's important to them to have novels that have some kind of official recognition Whereas other publishing houses, I mean, we are just about, just starting a new uh, project with the um, uh, National Center for Translation, um, wh where we would be looking at books that haven't necessarily won prizes. But I, I do think that the idea of the concept of having won a prize is very reassuring to publishers, that they feel that, right, you know, right, this book, it's not, it's not just us, that somebody else has, has said, has, has deemed this work to be of merit. So that's it. And I can see a question for me now. Uh, but, but command, uh, I have to convey this comment to uh, Russia. Ustaza uh, Catherine Dilwati, Ustaza Russia, but all Taliq, but all Anna Shaif and Ruaya can it together. اولا كانت مليانه معلومات قيمه جدا عن عصر نابليون في مصر وفي نفس الوقت كان قريب جدا من من مننا وسهل ان الواحد يتعاطف معاه وتقول انا ما كانش عندي فكره خالص عن الوحشيه اللي كانت موجوده في الاحتلال بتاع نابليون وما كنتش عارفه ان نابليون كان لديه عشيقه مصريه بصرف النظر عن طبيعه علاقتهم ان هما كان له اي علاقه باي واحده مصريه فألف ألف مبروك مش بس على الترجمة ولكن على الرواية نفسها أنا أنا معجبة بيها جدا. و هنرجع بقى تاني للسؤال ده I, I just had this question of the translation process of and style of work for this book and if it was different. Um, well, just uh, this is Karen Benson. Um, primarily, whenever there is a a shift from contemporary to uh, to older, uh, to, a shift between eras, I should say, especially when there's a diary, uh, which I think I, I spoke about a little bit uh, at, at some earlier point. Uh, whenever there is something that is said to have been written in the 1800s or the 1600s or in the 1100s, as in, in one case, for one, for one book I translated, uh, the contrast, but there, there does has, have to be some contrast between the styles. Um, 20th century can't just write like 18th century and pretend to be the same because it isn't the same. So that's that's basically it. Otherwise, the the process is is pretty much is pretty much straightforward for um, in 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 terms of timeline and so. Mm -hmm. Now, I I would say that of course uh, somebody I'm sure you both know fairly well the late. Gamal Ghidani yes, of was, course. A, was, was a major pi pioneering figure in the 
transformation of the historical novel into what it has become, namely not only a, an attempt to fictionalize history, but to make it of considerable relevance to the present day. امم هو الاستاذ راجي بي الدكتور راجي بيتكلم على طبعا دور جمال الغيطاني ان هو من من رواد انه مش بس ادى الروايه التاريخيه اهميتها انما خلاها يبقى لها انعكاسات على الاحداث المعاصره او على عصرنا الحالي. I mean, Zini Barakat is certainly set in a particular century, but it is very clearly <laughs> referring to Egypt in the 1960s at the same time. Well, he doesn't actually say that, but it doesn't take much to uh, to realize what it is he's doing. Oh, yeah, and it's any barakat, for example, the time of the time of the time, but it's very clear that there are a lot of scattered on the 60s, the 20s, in Egypt, and the issue is not that anyone is able to make this statement. I want to ask you a question. The story of the story came with you at the time. Um, Russia is asking me how long it took me to translate the novel. Oh, I, I didn't translate that one. Um, my dear, wonderful Egyptian colleague, Farouk uh, Mustafa Abdul Wahab translated it, and he did uh, the, some others as well, but um, that took a long time. Yes. Uh... I have a wonderful story about a meeting. Well, I met Gamal many times, but this is in, in the Netherlands. We were at a conference and after lunch, he was sitting at a table writing in Arabic. And mm. I said, are you writing your next novel? And he said, no. He said, I'm practicing imitating the style of Ibn al-Arabi. Oh. Because I'm preparing to write Kitab at Jalliyat. And he said, so, I mean, he was very- Let me just, let me just, let me just translate that, all right? <laughs> اه او كان بيقول انا في بس قصه هو الروايه دي اللي ترجمها انا ما ترجمتش جمال الغيطاني هو اللي ترجمها زميلي فاروق مصطفى عبد الوهاب انما انا عندي قصه لطيفه جدا على جمال الغيطاني ان كنا في هولندا وبعدين لقيته قاعد بيكتب بالعربي فقلت له سالته هو, هو انت ايه بتكتب روايتك القادمه؟ قال له لا انا بقلد اسلوب ابن الع... ابن العربي ابن العربي ابن العربي علشان كان بيحضر لروايته تجليات فكان عايز يقلد هذا الاسلوب ويبقى متمكن منه. الله يرحمه ويرحمه. Yes, may he rest in peace. Yes. انا بالنسبه لي الروايه خدت في ايدي يمكن بنتكلم لنا في شهر حاجه زي كده وبعدين المراجعه بتاخد وقت اكتر. شهر. اه. Yeah, for me, for me the novel took about a month to translate and then. في اكثر شخصيه عجبتك في الروايه؟ زينب الحقيقه الماما 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 سكر اه ماما غلبانه جدا لانها ضحيه لل يعني ضحيه الاحداث يعني هي الوحيده اللي فعلا مصيره هي كل الناس مصيره مش مخيره او النساء بالذات في الروايه مصيرات مش مخيرات يعني البكري الشيخ البكري بينقي ان هو يدي ابن يقدم بنته كبش كده لنابليون والتاني بيبقى عايز واحده ست والتاني بيبقى ما عايز مش عارفه ايه Russia actually asked me which my favorite character was in the novel. And while I initially said Zainab, I thought actually the mother was perhaps my favorite character. And then it occurred to me that all the female characters seem singularly helpless uh, to control their fate in the novel. Uh, whereas you have uh, Sheikh Al Bakri um, basically offering his, do his daughter on the altar of you know, Napoleon's lusts. Yeah. And yeah. you have Napoleon himself wanting a woman, and you know, even even uh, you know, Alton being a, a lover or whatever. But in the end, Zainab and the mother are not in control of their fates. They they are just moved by the agents or the actants who are all male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is very reflective of the era, and I think even the time that we live in. And I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the time that we live in, and I will say that the we are coming to close the event in the okay. next two minutes. I, um, I just really wanted to thank everyone 
uh, who turned up today on this online uh, beautiful um, insights of, of, of the novel and uh, all the contributors and participants and the audience indeed. I know how difficult it is these days, Professor Roger, to, to come online and spend one hour and a half. Um, however, this question should go to Margaret. Maybe next year, hopefully, we can all come together in person. Um, <laughs> under yeah. one roof to... Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, yeah. Given the circumstances, I think we did um, very well here and we apologize for any uh, technical issues. Oh, wow. might... Um, I think uh, it's fine. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Rasha Adli, for your contribution. Uh, Professor Roger Allen, uh, it has been a great honor to have you on board today. And indeed, uh, Sara Anani for uh, your uh, incredible efforts and help with, with the whole uh, translation. And indeed, uh, the last word will be here for our um, inspiring uh, figure and uh, important uh, lady who is significantly contributing to the literature uh, translation in London. Margaret, the last word is yours. Thank you. Indeed. Unmute myself. Well, I just want to um, praise uh, Sarah again. I mean, brilliant job. I'm not only tran translating the book, but it's a fascinating, fascinating book and, and uh, interpreting and translating all, all evening and uh, fielding questions and, and so on. Well, we go to the next year. Um, with another prize, 17th, 17th year of the prize, I think. Um, really, uh, you know, but it's a different territory that we're in. We're in now. There are there are other prizes that award Arabic uh, literary translation now, quite a few, and and there are many workshops to encourage Arabic uh, translators to develop. Of course, when we started, that didn't exist at all, but uh, we're yeah. fantastically uh, pleased that this uh, landscape has changed and the atmosphere and encouragement given to uh, Arabic literature uh, around the world is, is, is brilliant. This is what we set out to do in the beginning. So very happy and very, very happy to meet all of you guys in, I mean, I, I can see your faces. Um, Next year, for sure, we will have a big face-to-face uh, -face, um, physical gathering. Whether or not we can pull everybody in from all over the world, as we can do now, that's another matter. Maybe we'll go to Cairo. Oh, that would be lovely. To Beta Sinari. And if, um, if I may, can we maybe just take a moment to um, honor the memory of Humphrey Davis because he's, um, it's just, uh, you know, on this occasion of the, he was the first winner of the prize. And I, I really think, um, you know, he's, I mean, he, he, yeah, well. He was a great mentor to many translators and also oh, he published his first ever literary translation in Manipal really? magazine, a short, short story was something like, uh, I can't remember when it was, it was uh, some time ago, but that his first, that's what he said to us, this is his first literary translation. That's and amazing. In, in Banipal. Long then, history then. Yes, long history. Amazing. Wonderful. And I really ha also have to thank, I mean, I put it in the chat, but I, for I forgot to mention that the girl with braided hair is published by Hoopoo Fiction, and they are a splendid, splendid publisher of um, an imprint of AUC Press. But since they started as Hoopoo Fiction, they've really gone to town and published many, many um, modern uh, contemporary Arab authors in, in translation. They're, they're brilliant, and they always make sure that they enter their works into the Safe Kobash Bani Par Prize. So we're very pleased about that, definitely. Wonderful. Excellent. Uh, just a last reminder to all our um, viewers and audience, uh, this session will be recorded and it will be uploaded on YouTube and all the other uh, social media 
channels. So uh, there will be a possibility for everyone to come back and watch this thoroughly at on your own convenience. Um, so please spread the word about it and hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be ready by, by sometime next week. Uh, again, thank you, Aaron, the digital producer in the back scene for organizing all of this and all the other contributors for tonight's session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. We'll leave you in peace and have a very good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.